Hey YouTube, Nick and Carrie here with Weekly Gaming Recap. Bringing you all your gaming highlights for the week of August 23rd, 2013. Today's gameplay is brought to you by Might and Delight's Shelter, uh, which releases on August 28th for $9.99 on Steam, uh, but you can get it right now for $8.99. Um, you can check out the website at www.sheltertheGame.com and if you head on over to the developer's website, you can pick up their previous game, PID and Shelter, for $15. Um, it was a pretty cool game. It's more like an escort mission where you're a badger. They don't tell you if you're a mama badger or a daddy badger, but you can be either, I guess, whatever your brain. You, you called yourself the mama badger. I am the mama badger. <laughs> you have five little badger cubs. I guess, I guess they're cubs. I don't think in, they're cubs. Whatever. I don't, I don't think that's the word for them. Whatever, but... Um, it definitely has an interesting art style, kind of like Tearaway. It almost looks like paper that's been painted. Um, the music's pretty cool. And you, died. you really get into it. And I died. I suck as a mom. I got <laughs> four of my little badger babies killed. And then I got killed and left the last one, who I called Reverse Mohawk, alone. He had to wander. Little Reverse Mohawk badger had to wander the countryside all by himself. But him and his brother Mohawk had were like the last two. You could hear him yelling the whole time. Oh my god! Yeah, you have to uh, basically what feed the heck them. Was that? You have to feed them, <laughs> and um, there's all kinds of uh, there's an environmental hazard with uh, the water. You have to uh, you can chase foxes, frogs. Um, you can get apples from trees, but basically the main enemy in the game is, seems to be fire, and the hawk where the hawk makes it almost like a stealth mechanic because you have to hide in the tall grass and watch for the hawk's pattern and kind of cross between um, bushes and stuff while the hawk's not over top of you. So it's a pretty interesting game. I liked it a lot. I thought um, it's definitely in the Proteus, almost I'm an art, a piece of art to play versus a full game, but it is a game. It's more, has more of a... Um, uh, point than Proteus, where Proteus was just you go out in the world and you just wander around. This you actually have to get somewhere with your baby badgers. Badger, badger, badger. But it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, check it out. If, if there's no shooting, um, lots of walking, basically like an escort mission. But it's cool. <laughs> I, I liked it a lot. I like what they did. I think we need more games like this that just kind of go off on a tangent and just take you somewhere unexpected on an adventure of the unknown. She's crazy. I am crazy. First story of the day. Battle Worlds uh, Kronos uh, was successfully kickstarted um, last year, I believe, by developer King Art. It's a German developer. Uh, the alpha testing is already underway. Not King Arthur? No. Okay. King Art. King Art. Art, yes. Um, open beta already underway. Or, I'm sorry, alpha. See, now you messed me up. I did. Alpha already underway with open beta planned for October and then a release of the full game come November. Uh, PC, Mac, Linux, and mobile tablet devices uh, will be launching in mid-2014. Um, it has passed the Steam green light. Uh, it is a turn-based strategy game with hex-based play. So uh, think Advanced Wars, uh, mm -hmm. but a little bit more polished. Civilization? Not that polished. <laughs> Between Advanced Wars and Civilization. Like, Advanced Wars is more cartoon, like cartoony. Okay. Uh, this one is a little less cartoony, a little bit more, I don't know, the lines just look more polished, just looks a little bit more real, but not, not like Civilization or okay. anything. Cool. Yeah. So, now that I have three stories in a row today. Uh-huh. Um, after a night of drinking... Amplitude, <laughs> Amplitude Studios uh, came up with an idea for its new game called Dungeon of the Endless. Uh, they wanted a roguelike with elements of tower defense, RPG, and something they could play with friends. Uh, so after this uh, drunken night of... <laughs> Surprise drinking doesn't feature heavily in the game. <laughs> they, um, they came up with this 2D pixel art, uh, which is set in a 3D world. Uh, they've teased two trailers so far. Um... 
and I think teased is the best word because the first one was just the ship landing and the door you getting picked right, open. Right, and it says what's behind the door. And the second one, you see, see the world and you see the ship crash into it, but you don't yeah. see in the ship. Right, you see the flip side, you basically. You see the flip side, yeah. Yeah, but then you don't see anything past that. Right, no so gameplay. It's definitely uh, teaser trailers. Um, there's been two released. They um, just had the other one at Gamescon. Um, the studio is responsible for Endless Space, so if you guys played that one, this is their next development. Um, looks interesting, but definitely need to know more because the trailers just you really demo. don't show anything. Yeah, there was like a screenshot or two that showed the dungeon part of it with like rooms and stuff, but I think definitely going to need like a demo on this yeah. one. Yeah. want to check it out. Uh, Wild Star's new uh, dev video talks about crowd control attacks. Um, they've released several videos already. Uh, but this one focuses on crowd control. So unlike other games, uh, when you get disarmed um, from an enemy, uh, before you just couldn't use your weapon for okay. a certain amount of time. This time with them, uh, if they disarm you, your weapon actually goes flying off and you have to go and grab it. So it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. So instead of just standing there and you can't do anything for five seconds because you can't use your weapon, like you can actually back up and like... Pick it back up. You like get out of the way so that they can't hit you anymore. Go pick up your weapon again and then start slashing at them again, kind of thing. So, so it avoids the whole MMO thing where your guy just shoots, and then you see kind of if you hit the people. It's like one of those things where now instead of just seeing like the stats happen, you're seeing an effect. So his weapon actually gets knocked out of his hand, and you can go do something about it versus right, just, right. You I'm can standing actually... there waiting for the virtual dice to roll in the background. But yeah, basically now you can counterattack. That's cool. So you can back up, kind of go jump for your weapon, and go start hacking again. Okay. Um, the game is subscription based. Ooh. Um, fifteen dollars a month, but but you can purchase cred or C R E D D, I believe it's called, uh -huh. uh, in the game from other players with your in-game gold to get another month of play. So basically, um, if you don't want to subscribe to it uh, and you're good at farming, you can go farm a bunch of gold and then use that to buy cred, which will earn you another month of subscription or however many you buy. I don't know how I feel about that. And then the verse, and it, you have to buy it from other players. So the reverse is true. So players who want to spend real money they can buy the cred for fifteen dollars uh -huh. and then sell it to you for in game gold. So I don't know how I feel about that. It's got a lot of mixed comments and stuff like on I the mean, forums. It's, it's good that they're trying, so that's cool. But, yeah, I mean it's got a lot of mixed mixed reviews. Um I, I mean I remember doing that in a, the text space game Medivia. Right. Because I had I was one of the few people of my friends that had a job at the time, so you know, I'd pay for real items with real money, and then they would pay me in-game gold so that I didn't have to farm because I didn't have the time to do it because I was always working. <laughs> you didn't have to pay money to actually play the game. That's, like, the difference. No, no. Yeah, so you have to actually pay money to play. Right. Or build up enough farming whatever to keep playing. Right. I don't know how to feel about that. So yeah. either way, um, a closed beta is currently available. Um, and the game's release is supposed to be sometime spring 2014. So, okay. um, I mean, it's interesting that they're trying something, I guess, different. But I don't really know how it's going to work out. We'll see. Yeah. That's why they're trying. Mm -hmm. um, seems once again that Shadow of the Eternals by Precursor Games, who were made up of former Silicon Knights employees, has not met its goal on Kickstarter for the second time. Um... Team is looking for other avenues of funding, but at this point, we basically won't be able to see if um, all the baggage that they had brought along with them was kind of shed and this was going to be a whole new, uh, I'm back, bitches, kind of, well, not really, but, you know, we're back and we're going to make a game and everything from before is before, not us. I feel like so, the very, this. I feel like this is the first Kickstarter that, I've noticed personally that when it did its second run around, like it didn't, the first one wasn't successful, mm -hmm. but the second time, I, um, most of them I've seen have been successful again. Right. I think this is like the first one that I've seen like double fail. Well. <laughs> Almost. 
could be just the Kickstarter's cooling off, or it could be that enough people heard about what happened previously and you know, maybe didn't, didn't want to ch- take a chance and say, well, we don't want to fund you. We don't necessarily not want your game, but we're not going to take a chance giving you money early. So right. who knows? But maybe it'll still see the light of day. Uh, Every Day is Play, a celebration of video games, is coming up on the last days on Kickstarter, and it needs your help to push it over its goal. Um, They're looking for 26,000 pounds, and it's already halfway there. Um, It's collaboration between multiple artists on a book with things like uh, paintings, pixel art, um, photographs, line art, uh, word art, and interviews, all mashed up celebrating video games. I think we Um, did that story a couple weeks ago. We did, and they haven't been funded yet, so get to it. Please help. Um, It's filled to the brim. Basically, they're over 200 pages now, so it's kind of costly to ship to the U.S., um, but I think it's definitely worth worth it. You can also get an e-book for cheaper, but um, I picked up the book and the e-book because I think think it's one of those things you really want to have a copy of. Um, They have some pretty cool... uh, higher tiered ones where it comes in like a console like box where you open it and it's got like a t-shirt and pants and stuff like that so but that one was really expensive but people are still buying it so hopefully uh you could check out the video below to see what it's all about and head on over and kickstart them if you can yes uh so a new zelda like rpg with a twist called uh sword and board everything's zelda like with a twist uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sword and board, uh, B O A R D, not board as in I'm bored. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> it's set in the imagination of a child. So there's pretend enemies, um, dungeons made out of pillows and blankets, cardboard forests. That's cool. Um, it's cutesy art style. Um, I, I thought it was I thought it was cute. Um, it's currently a one man team. Uh, former Big Fish employee Robert Busey. He wants to use the funds to uh, get better audio and animation. So he's been working on this for a while by himself, I believe, for about seven months or so. Um, okay. He's only looking for $7,000. So uh, there's still about 10 days to go. I believe he's at fifty-five or 5600 So he's almost there. Uh, going to come out for PC, Mac, Linux. Uh, there is a demo available now, so you can actually play and get your hands on it and see what it's like before you uh, back it. And eventually it will come out on the Android and iOS devices. Cool. Yes. Uh, a point and click about murdered parents and a cat named Mr. Midnight. And that's what Franbo is about. Uh, all you need to do is find your way out of a mental institution, find your cat, get to your aunt's house, and then figure out just how your parents were dismembered. Uh, The game has charming visuals mixed with a definite horror vibe that gives it, makes it probably creepier than if it was, the art wasn't so like cute and charming, so it's definitely (laughs) weird. Um, The team at Kill Monday Games have already passed their their, uh, Indiegogo goal of $20,000, and they're still going on until August 30th, so you can head on over and check out the demo to see if you like the adventure game. Um, but if you like your game's point and clicky and horror, you should definitely check it out because it's dripping with those things. Are you the reason why your parents are dismembered? No. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You, you, Since you're, you're in, in the menstrual inner... You, you no. gotta play the game to find out. <laughs> That's the whole point. You just don't know. Uh, sad news this week as Big Fish Games had to close their Vancouver studio and lay off about 49 people. Um, sadly, this also shuts down their premium game streaming service, and so the company can remain focused on their casual and free-to-play markets. So that sucks because they did uh, help us that one time with that giveaway. So sad to see yeah. that they uh, had to let people go. But I guess maybe they took a chance with that streaming, and then it sounded like not too many people bought into more like you know a Netflix subscription to them. I think, you know, because you play a lot of their Big Fish games. I think a lot of people do. buy them and play them for a really long time and then buy, like, a new one. I think that's the problem. I think a lot of their yeah. games are, like, you buy it and you play it for, like, people who buy those games play them for extended periods of time. 
more than like one a month would be a lot for somebody who plays like a big fish game. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it, and it's because they're more casual and simulation. I just I get one and then I play until I get tired of it basically, and then you know buy another one and then kind of move on to it or you know once I've gone through one whole run if it's like a like a time management or some kind of game like that mm -hmm. um I'll play through it and then I'll kind of just not look at it for a long time and then since you've already bought it generally you can go back and re-download it onto your computer like if for some reason it was gone right on um on your account so you just re-download it and then you just play it again you don't have to you know you don't have to buy it again or anything so it's sad but you know I like I like their games and hopefully those we're still around. Yeah, and ho you know, it's just their one studio, so hopefully those people can find work pretty quickly. In Vancouver. Yes. The Chrono Trigger guy. My Chrono Trigger guy. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chrono Trigger Symphony album is out now. Uh, it's available on iTunes and Louder for uh, seven ninety nine. It is the 18th anniversary of Chrono Trigger this mm. year that just uh, celebrated... 18th anniversary in August uh, for its U.S. release. Uh, so you can dust off your SNES or check out one of the ports. Um, I'm currently playing it on the PS3 again for probably the billionth time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I still have never gotten all of the trillion endings because uh, there's like 52 endings. I think I've gotten maybe 15. Wow. Maybe. Still alive. So, um, you know, if you love the music, pick up the soundtrack. It's really awesome. Um, I listen to it all the time. I was listening to it last night, actually, mm -hmm. on the on the computer you heard it. I did. <laughs> so. Uh, Julian Corey has an amazing music video for his song Polybus. I think I'm saying that right. Polybus. P-O-L-Y-B-I-U-S. Polybus. Polybius. Uh, um, with sounds provided by awesomely retro video game consoles. Um, from what I could tell... He's got uh, 3.5 inch floppy drives, 3.5 inch hard drives, a Commodore 64, a Genesis uh, models 1 and 2, an Atari 2600 Junior, a Super Nintendo, a Sega Master System 2, a Sony PlayStation 1, and a Sega Master System control stick. Um, Sounds like almost everything you have. Yes. Almost. Uh, he also fried a hard drive, as you can see it's smoking in the final moments of the video. Uh, it's pretty short and... Um, you'll have to check out the story to see the video as it's linked on Vimeo, and we can't link it here. So, But check it out. It's a pretty cool little song. Not that long. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'd like to see like a making of, like a two-hour making of behind it, but I don't know. Now, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Hero of the Kingdom. Uh, it's part adventure, part real-time strategy. Uh, there was a trailer in the gameplay footage. Um, kind of reminds me of um, Anno Online. Um, for those of you who are familiar with that, uh, it's a little bit slow paced, but it's still fun to play. You know, you have to kind of click on everything to, to do each action and, but it's, um, I don't know, it's, you can go at your own pace, like however you want to do it. You could leave it, you can come back to it. It's not, um, the rush, you're not pressed for time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just, uh, there is a demo available, um, or you can buy it now. Uh, I believe it's about $8 on their website. So okay. if you want to check it out before you buy it, then you can do that. Um, PC gamers can breathe a sigh of relief as it was revealed that Call of Duty Ghosts will in fact support dedicated servers. Um, as to what capacity those dedicated servers will be, they haven't said yet. Uh, we're guessing more than likely you're going to have to rent the server from an authorized reseller and you won't be able to run one from home. Um, if you would, that would be amazing, but I seriously doubt at this point that they're gonna let you do that. Um, but most multiplayer games on the PC are sadly going that way where you have to buy a server from a authorized reseller. No, no funny business. And that funny stuff. No funny stuff. <laughs> Fuddy duddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the uh, Origin Humble Bundle is the best-selling Humble Bundle ever. Sounds like an oxymoron. I know. Origin Humble Bundle. I know. Origin's not Humble. No, they're not. <laughs> As you can tell in this in this story. Um, <laughs> People are the last um, bundle that did really well, I think it was number five. I think Pack was five. Um, it had over um, 
$5.1 million raised, I believe, but this one has sold over 1.9 million bundles, has raised 9.3 million bundles, wow. or raised $9.3 million, uh, with the average price only being about $4.90. So That's because uh, that's how you unlock the second tier. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for yeah. stealing what I was going to say. Yeah. Well, thanks so do. much. Uh, the games included are Dead Space, Burnout Paradise, The Ultimate Box, uh, Crisis 2, Maximum Edition, Mirror's Edge, Dead Space 3, Medal of Honor, um, and if you beat the price of $4.90, like Nick said, you can unlock four more games, uh, which is Command & Conquer, Red Alert 3, Uprising, uh, Battlefield 3, Populous, and The Sims 3 Starter Pack, which includes the original game late night and the high-end loft stuff expansion packs uh, you have until wednesday to buy so a couple more days and i'm sure well, i'm the, sure they'll the probably second, get over the 10 million mark the second tier was only if you beat the average so the average is always like fluctuating well the last three days that i've looked at it the yeah. price has pretty much stayed the same at four dollars and ninety cents it's probably because everyone's paying like five bucks yeah <laughs> well there's there's been a bunch of contributors um you know 1.9 million sold, so I'm sure by Wednesday they might get up to 10 million. Maybe. More origin news. EA gave most PC gamers a heart attack this week as they announced a 24-hour return policy for their digital games. Um, basically, gamers now have 24 hours from the first time they launch their game or seven days after purchase if you have not launched the game to return it for a full refund. Uh, the guarantee does not include non-EA uh, games, nor does it include DLC. So anything that's not published by EA and any of their DLC is not included. Um, there was a question asked about compilations, and basically if you buy a compilation that includes DLC, that's fine, but they'll be grabbing everything back when they give you a refund, obviously. You don't get to piecemeal it out. So it's good to hear. Um, EA seems like maybe they're finally taking steps to compete with Steam, which is good. It's what, you know, we need. Healthy competition is good for us as gamers because we get better deals out of it. Well, it gives us options, And too. it gives us options. And, it, you know, you can... People are like, ah, oh, screw Origin. It sucks. It's like, well, yeah, but we like our options. So it sucks that you can only get Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 on Origin, but... You know, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. So, well, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. It sounds like um, maybe they're moving in the right direction now. So it would be good for us gamers if they do. Yes. Uh, Blizzard has announced their expansion pack for Diablo Three called Reaper of Souls. Uh, a new class is introduced: the Crusader. Um, a new act, new in-game options, new monsters, and of course, more loot. Uh, the game is meant to be darker in the tone with the expansion uh, centering around uh, Malfiel, and I'm sure I mispronounced that. Uh, anyway, he's the angel of death, um, and he has seized control over Diablo's soul, so the Black Heart Stone. His soul? His, his soul himself, yes. Soul. Okay. Um, he is able to turn citizens into his minions and summon fallen angels to battle against you. So, um, I don't think it gave a release date. Eh, whenever they're ready. If I did, if it did, I forgot to write it down. So sorry. It's Blizzard. Whenever they're ready. <laughs> so yeah, it's coming. Coming soon. Uh, the once experimental spaceship simulator EVE VR has finally been sanctioned by CCP to become a full game, which is now titled EVE Valkyrie. Uh, this game is basically a space combat dogfighting simulator set in the EVE universe, and it becomes super immersive once you slip on those awesome Oculus Rift goggles. It's going to be great. Um, while still in the very early stages, uh, the team has already upgraded this version to run on Oculus Rift uh, HD version, so all the graphics were said to be a lot better at Gamescom, uh, text was easier to read, things like that. You didn't see uh, the gaps between pixels anymore, so um, it's said to look amazing, and it's good to know that uh, CCP is open to taking risks, and now it sounds like maybe we'll have 
the people who complain about Dust will have a game of their own, since Dust is only on PS3, and Eve is super hardcore and on PC. This sounds like it's going to be PC only, so PC gamers will have a little side game of their own. If you don't want to be super hardcore into Eve, you'll actually be able to contribute or do something somehow. But there's no word on... Except for me, because I can't play Oculus Rift. There's no word on how the universes will connect yet between Dust, uh, Eve, Valkyrie, and Eve, but I'm assuming there will be some kind of... Not rift between worlds, but go between, so... Sounds cool. Something or other. Something or other. Uh, so the Xbox One game, Connect Sports Rivals, along with the Connect 2.0, should be able to recognize your face and features and translate that into a character for their game. So basically, um, it has you do a series of things where you turn your head so that it can recognize you know, what you look like, it tries to recognize your skin tone, uh, facial features, nose, ears, eyes hair it's cool um they did show the technology off at gamescom Mm -hmm. um and they put it to the test to see how well it worked for different people so there were four uh, four videos that showed mixed results so it was kind of kind of good but it looked like it needed some work so uh, the first one was pretty accurate with a blonde girl um they it recognized that she had glasses it told her to take off her glasses so they could scan her face and then they did put the glasses back on her in the character that's cool. So that was pretty accurate, and they could tell that she had blonde hair that was um, like shoulder length, and um, it, it looked pretty accurate. Then the um, the second one was a little bit off. It showed a blonde girl um, with a ponytail. Uh, the top half looked really like her, but then the chin was like really Distorted like or something. pointed almost, uh-huh. and she had more of a a, a much wider chin. Um, so it's not it wasn't be perfect. But. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't it wasn't completely accurate like the first one. Uh, the third one gave a man who had a shaved head. It actually gave him like a full head of hair. <laughs> so <That's funny. laughs> they were like, "Uh, oh, yeah, that's not supposed to happen." <laughs> <laughs> so you could tell you could hear the like the developers in the background go, "Oh yeah, that's not right. That's not right at all." Like maybe it figured out like his hair follicles and like this is what you would look like. Chia pet. Well. I don't know. I mean, the hair on his, he had like a um, very short buzz cut, like a- almost bald, but not exactly. And it gave him like blonde surfer hair. That's awesome. Like, <laughs> and then the. You don't uh, look good bald. The game says you look better like this. <laughs> and then the fourth one um, looked pretty decent again. Um, it didn't give him facial hair, but it, it did much better with his, with his regular hair so um hopefully you know with the demos they'll take the time and kind of make some tweaks to make it a lot better um hopefully with the new connect it'll actually be able to see me because ours now can't tell who the hell i am or where i'm at or can't tell me from a piece of furniture so can't even tell you that you're in front of it it doesn't even know that i'm there like it doesn't you're a ghost (laughs) Well, I wonder, you know, I have low-res fingerprints, so maybe it's, no, uh, maybe it I just have a completely low-res body and it just doesn't see me. I'm transparent. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's, that's not what my problem is. Oh, so sad. Uh, Sony's press conference at Gamescom did not disappoint as they blew through a huge list of indie games coming to the PlayStation 4 and PS Vita. Um, the, also, the big news was that the PlayStation 4 got a release date. For November uh, 15th in North America and November 29th in Europe, Europeans will also be getting a 14-day trial of PlayStation Plus, and the PlayStation 4 will launch in 32 countries, and they did get Twitch TV integration, so the whole, like, Microsoft, uh, Xbox One has Twitch TV and PlayStation 4 doesn't, squashed. Both consoles get Twitch TV, so everybody will now be able to go one place to get PlayStation 4, Xbox One, streaming goodness right from your console. I feel that's a really good move on everybody's part. And PlayStation is actually launching in all 32 countries, unlike Microsoft, who had to recant their statement and move it down to 14. They didn't say... They said they're <laughs> launching in 32 countries, but they didn't uh, They didn't say um, what 32 countries are launch day. So they said they are launching in 32 countries, but they didn't say I didn't that it's see all be on launch day. Okay. if they were actually doing it worldwide, or not worldwide, but those 32 on the 29th, or how that plays into right, it. Right. Um, 
the PS Vita finally got a price drop as well that everybody has been asking for. Um, the Wi-Fi only console got a price drop to $199.99, along with the proprietary memory cards also getting a much asked for price drop. Um, it's not as big as some people hoped, but everybody's been saying the memory cards are too high and the Vita's too expensive, so now's the time that we'll start seeing probably bigger retailer sales, so if you've been holding out, now's the time to get it, because there's lots of good stuff on the Vita. And finally, Notch chimed in to say that Minecraft will be getting a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PS Vita release, and he's... Sounds like he's pretty committed to a PlayStation 4 launch day release as well. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, on to the Microsoft side of Gamescom. MS, uh, Microsoft finally revealed that their indie plans for Xbox, which is ID at Xbox, um, is basically they're going to start accepting developers. So think of it almost like the early days of Steam where you had to apply and then they would say yes, no before Steam Greenlight. So that's what their whole platform is now. Um, they're working with 50 developers currently. Um, if you are chosen to work with them, you get two free dev kits from Microsoft. So that's pretty huge, I think. Um, you don't need to be accepted sounds like you don't need to be accepted to start working on your game somehow, but if you're accepted, you get the full list of like tech support help and, you know, APIs and stuff like that and the two development kits. Whereas if you're not accepted, um, they didn't say, but they made it sound like you can still work on your game and kind of bring it to them later and then maybe they'll approve it kind of stuff. Um, but it's good to see that they are finally starting to work with indies. Um, there will be 23 launch titles for the Xbox One, and Europeans can expect to see FIFA 14 packed into their pre-order uh, Xbox One console while supplies last. So if you've been holding out and you really like FIFA and you want Xbox One, you should run and grab one if you're in Europe, because it sounds like they're pretty limited. And I think that's a better deal than the 14 days of PS Plus, but maybe that's why Sony kind of scrambled with that. that Sounded really weird to me. You get 14 days of PlayStation Plus. I'm like, wow, not even 30? That's Yeah, you just get two weeks. But why would they do that? And then it's like, oh, Microsoft said everybody gets free, or, you know, pre-orders get FIFA while supplies last. Like, oh, that's probably why they did it. Yeah. And then also we should note that uh, Walmart, as of, I think it was Saturday, uh, just started re-accepting pre-orders. So they actually stopped taking pre-orders for a while because it was basically sold out everywhere. Um, they have started taking pre-orders again. However, you will not get the console on launch date. Um, the consoles will come out, I believe, for the PlayStation. It's going to be December 19th. So mm. you're basically having to wait almost another month if you order it from here on out. So um, either don't order from Walmart yeah, or just wait till launch day and hope that you can get, you know, you can get in line early enough to grab one uh off the shelves that you didn't pre-order. And you can check Best Buy too, because I know they're doing a lot of um, midnight launches for the PlayStation 4 now that the date was finalized. And they didn't have the console by itself, but they were still selling bundles when I last checked. Yeah. So there's that. So just, just so you know, heads up if you get from Walmart. Um, the free-to-play Killer Instinct gets a price. You can pay $20 to unlock all the characters from the onset or you can pay $40 to unlock all the characters and get a bunch of bonus DLC. So that's good to hear because I know a lot of people were kind of pissed that um, Killer Instinct was going to be kind of piecemeal, $5 a character fighting game. And, you know, it's a lot of people like me, I'd rather just pay the 20 bucks and get over with. I don't like to piecemeal my games. So no, that's, I agree. I definitely like where they went with that. But for people who don't have a lot of money, you can start playing the game with one character. And then if you only like one other character, you pay five bucks, then, you know, you can always play somebody online who has the other characters. So that's good for you. Um, finally, the big news was CEO Steve Ballmer says he's retiring. Um, he's basically retiring within the next 12 months as soon as Microsoft finds a replacement for him, which he'll also be uh, kind of training uh, during the transition period. Microsoft said they're looking to become more of a hardware vendor, so 
Get your resumes we'll in. We'll really see <laughs> where that goes. I'm kind of confused on where they're going with this, but, you know, Xbox One obviously is hardware. They they're, they were pushing the Windows RT, which kind of failed, or failed. They're pushing the <laughs> Windows kinda. Phone, which failed. It only has like 4% market share. I mean, they're good devices. It's just, I don't know. I don't know if they need a better marketing team or what, but, you know, nobody's buying these things. So we'll see what happens. Your Spark guy. Spark. Uh, Project Spark, the beta is arriving in October for Windows 8 devices and January 2014 for the Xbox One, uh, where everything will be fully playable. Uh, you can register now on the game's website. Uh, game Creation Sandbox is where you can use crossroads mode to build uh, something really quickly through story cho uh, choices. There's a blank slate editor, or you can take games that others have built basically and edit them yourself. So um, there's a lot of things that you can do with this game. Um, you know, we, we talked about it um, during our E3 show mm -hmm. and several times since. Um, it's just, it looks awesome. Um, it would be the one probably, one game that I'd probably be most excited about for Xbox One. Uh, but it is coming out on PC, so more than likely I'll probably, <laughs> we'll probably hold out. Um, it's coming to PC, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. It is uh, coming to 360. It is, that's what the story said. It did wow. not say that before, but it does say the Xbox 360 now. That would be pretty huge. Um, the Xbox One, however, will have exclusives. Yes, so it'll have exclusive features, the ability to use the software, and the connect to create a mini mocap studio in your living room. So they didn't really expand on that, but get your black leotards and ping pong yes. balls ready. You're going mocap. <laughs> so I'm very excited to hear more about it. And then Retro City Rampage is coming through the uh, 3DS eShop uh, just in time for the holidays. So. Um, it just says holiday release, doesn't actually give a date. Okay. Uh, but it will be playable at PAX Prime for those of you who are going. Cool. Um, they recently added Retro Plus Graphics Mode that doubles on-screen colors and adds soft shadows to the game. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Rampage City is. Retro City uh, Rampage. Retro City Rampage, yes. I tried to say that backwards. Not Ram Rampage, <laughs> Rampage City, City Retro. Retro. Yeah. Try to say that backwards. Uh, it's a humorous open world game of crime. Um, it started as a port of Grand Theft Auto 3 to the N uh, NES. So, kind of makes sense that it's coming to the 3DS. It's very parody heavy. Yes. There's a lot of things in it, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear. Um, there's yeah. just but it's Skate or Die. Everything in it is a throwback to something from your childhood, basically. If you've yes. played video games starting from the NES on forward, there'll be a reference in there that you should be able to get. Yeah. So it looks, I think it'll be a good um, travel title, mm -hmm. basically one that you can just take out of your pocket and go when you want. So the only problem I had with it is on the Vita, it seemed too, a little too small. Like because of the 8-bit graphics, your guy was like, you know, when you play on the TV, your guy's pretty big. When you play on the computer, you're sitting like really close. But on the Vita, your guy seemed like a little too small. I almost wish like either the Vita screen was bigger or they zoomed it in a little more. That was well, like, maybe that's fixed with the like if it's on a 3DS XL or something. I don't know. Oh, uh, maybe yeah, the XL might. Since it's good. a bigger screen, that'd be good. Um, so either petitions work or Ubisoft was just toying with us, but Ubisoft's the division. The seamless blend of PvE and PvP is coming to the PC. Um, amazingly. Either amazing. I hope they listen to us, but that's just me. because <laughs> uh, It's basically a third-person shooter that wowed everybody at E3, um, especially when the player character walked by an open door in cover behind a car and closed it, which Still talking about that most people door. think that's retarded and it's not anything cool and it's stupid but when your player character reacts to something naturally in the world without you having to push a button and if it's something that they do more than just that with like even just little things like pushing things out of the way while they're running or whatever it could be big because the majority of times when you get frustrated with a game it's because you're stuck on something stupid in the world 
that's causing you to not have fun and it breaks the immersion. Basically like in Battlefield when your soldier can't, you know, walk up because there's a tiny brick in front of him. Because there's a little rock that he can't yeah. step over. <laughs> because the wall crumbled and now the crumble usually isn't that way and it fell weird and your guy is stuck. So that's pretty huge. <laughs> um, the most talked about aspect besides the multiplayer um, has been the... Um, it's not even offline play, but it's connectability with tablets. So your friends can basically be outside of the game world connect to their with their tablet, use a UAV or a drone, shoot enemies while they're not actually um, sitting in front of their console or at their PC or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's no word on when this is dropping, but um, the announced next-gen versions are coming late 2014. So probably around there. We hope it doesn't get pushed to 2015 for PC, because that would suck. But... Stranger things have happened in the PC world. True. Uh, so don't expect to bring your Sims 3 characters into Sims 4. Uh-oh. Um, due to different technology, uh, they will not be able to convert. So uh, basically when you buy Sims 4, you will have to start over. Um, to me, I don't think this is so much of a big deal. Right. Um, yes, I have stories, and yes, I have people that I particularly use in uh, Steam, uh, Steam, in Sims 3, yeah. um, but... It would be they, nice, but it's not like a... But I don't know why you would expect it, because it's not like... It's the same thing with Sims 1, Sims 2. You've never been able to bring any of your characters over, so... Except for, you know, the ones that are already within the town, so... It doesn't mean anything to me that they said that. I don't... Everybody's having this huge ruckus over it, and I'm like... You haven't been able to do it before. Why would you be able to do it now? Carrie like, says, get over yourself, people. Yeah, get over it. Um... <laughs> well, it could be from, like, Mass Effect, because, you know, Mass Effect 1, you ported your character to Mass Effect 2, and you ported your character to It's not that character. type of game. I know, but I'm saying, like, people who are just coming into video games, like, now, like, in the last couple years, maybe they were like, oh, I'm just going to be able to take my guy, because it's Sims no. 4. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe they want to make sure those people are like, hey, 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 this is a Mass Effect. Cool, you're it, It's not that type of game. Get over it. It's not that hard to remake your person. I find that's probably, besides building my house, I think that's probably the most fun that I have is actually making my character. Um, there uh, was a new trailer that was shown that has lots of new tools for building and uh, character creation. So instead of... Uh, I think one of the coolest things is that it made, you know, a part of the house on one side and then it made another room on the other side and it decided it didn't like where it put that room mm -hmm. and picked up the whole room. So instead of having to delete every oh, single wall. Cool. I remember having to do that. And Yeah, so instead of having to delete every single wall, now you can pick up the whole room as, it, as itself and plop it somewhere else. Um, so it's a crane simulator. You're just going... <laughs> <laughs> so, and then also the character creation um, has newer tools so that basically you can make your person buxom. You can make them very, very skinny. You can make them very, you can um, hone their legs to make their legs really muscular and their arms skin. Like you can make a really muscular person. You can make somebody um, with a big booty, can very, you, very big booty. Can you make them like the, the bodybuilder joke, like they're huge up here and then they have like tiny little skinny legs. I, I, they didn't show that, but yes, I think that's the whole premise <laughs> that yes, you can do that because they made a larger woman, uh -huh. much larger woman mm -hmm. in the game than um, normally it was kind of, you know, skinny, fit, and then fat were like your three choices. Uh -huh. But now there's like... Well, how fat like, do you want like them? A like, of... yeah, like there's, I mean, you can go pretty darn fat to like, you know, fat Albert fat to, <laughs> fat <laughs> to Albert. like, I, I hate to say that. A, I mean, that's a, mean. That's going to be a web series now. The Sims, Fat Albert, <laughs> that's episode mean. one. That's, <laughs> that's me. But, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, yeah, so you can, you can do more uh, as far as making your characters. Um, the PC and the Mac will see a release early May 2014. Um, they're still making Sims 3 expansion packs. Um, their next one, I think, is like releasing in October. So, um, hey, they'll, they'll ride that wave. Well, I, you know, I have pretty much every expansion pack except for the newest one. 
The resort one? Um, the resort one, right. Um, but I just wait until they go on sale. Like, I don't ever buy them at launch um, unless there's something with the pre-order because normally there's some kind of, like, exclusive thing. Plants vs. Um, Zombies. Yes, like I did that one for Supernatural. Um, but otherwise, I just I just wait for them to go on sale. Actually, I think they're on some of them are on sale right now for, like, 50% off, so, um, on Origin. Um Yes, it's going to include, of course, a full single-player offline component. Um, the game, that's what the game is kind of meant to be. Hey, people so, were worried after SimCity. I know. After the, after the whole thing, everybody people thought that that's how but it was going to go. But... but just think, now you have 24 hours because it is an Origin game. So you, if you boot it up and it's online only and they lied to us, you can just return you, it. Yeah, you can say, screw you. have 24 you. hours to be like, I'm yeah. out. Yeah. Um... Yes, there is going to be some multiplayer or online connection, um, but yes, you can enjoy it singly, just like the game is as of right now. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. We like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, I'd like to think that we're in the resurgent of the mech game, because they seem to be coming left and right, which is awesome. Um, and one of them is Respawn Entertainment's Titanfall, and it got a huge buzz at this year's Gamescom. Uh, basically, Titanfall mixes infantry combat with mech combat. Um, usually, when you're in those type of scenarios, uh, people in mechs just kind of stomp on you or shoot you with a giant rocket and you're toast and you have no <laughs> retaliation. Um, this kind of skirts the balance where um, you're, there's only so many mechs on the battlefield at the same time. So that's how they get around that first off. After you call in a mech, if you get destroyed, there's a seems to be a significant cooldown time before you can call a new mech in and the mechs drop from the sky. So those are two interesting takes on the, the mech genre, I guess. Uh, the second thing is that the infantry has a lot of parkour abilities. So they showed off where uh, you could run kind of uh, jump and skirt the side of a building and then jump back down. And your infantry players are also uh, equipped with jetpacks to make things like that even more awesome. So there'll be lots of flying around or just boosting your run speed or jumping ability. So you're not so helpless even as, the playing field. as uh, you know, as previous games. And um, they did show where like you could jump on top of the mech and kind of like start Messing Can with you like it. pull them out of the top? Um, no, because aren't they sit in the middle, don't they? They sit in the middle, and but I think when it blows up, they get like ejected into the sky, and you can like they're kind of like helpless when they eject out until they hit the ground again. So you can kind of nail them like that too. Um, you can check out the four minute video below to get a better idea with what's going on with it. And Titanfall is headed to PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 4 in spring of 2014. I'm kind of surprised they didn't uh, announce an Xbox One release, yeah. release, but maybe they're working on it. Uh, on to the game releases. Um, last week we missed Sir You're Being Hunted, which came out on Steam. Uh, Electronic Superjoy, which we had last week, if I remember correctly is out of Steam Early Access, is around the Steam Store already. So that was a pretty quick uh, transition there yeah. between Early Access and uh, full full release. I mean, most of the stuff was in place already. The only things missing seemed to be, like, kind of achievements and some levels. So that's, you know, that's kind of what we like from our Early Access. You don't want to stay in Early Access forever. That seems right. kind of weird. Yeah. Um, coming out this week would be Lost Planet 3 for PC, 360, and PlayStation 3. Uh, Madden NFL 25 for 360 and PS3, Killer is Dead for 360 and PS3, Final Fantasy 14: A Realm Reborn for PC and PS3, uh, Hatsu Miku Project Diva F for PS3. Hatsune. I did it pretty good. <laughs> Painkiller Hell and Damnation for 360. <laughs> and finally, the PC releases are Castlevania Lord of the Shadows Ultimate Edition, Shelter, which you can see playing in the background, Indie Dev Tycoon, Chaos Engine, Guardians of Middle Earth, and Memora. I actually could pronounce that word. Which one? Hatsune. That's good. That's why I keep you around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all for our show this week. Uh, we want to remind you, check out our friends over at startslack.net who have podcasts every week to keep you company during a long drive. Um, 
check us out on our website at www.weeklygamingrecap.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash wgamingrecap. You can email us at the email address show at weeklygamingrecap.com if you want to send us any cool stories you found or something you want us to cover, something maybe you think is not getting enough coverage in the media. Uh, and also remember to rate, comment, share, and subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Until next time, see, see you later. later.